Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Bharat Zende, Director for Strategic Accounts, Verse Innovation. We have Mr. Zazir Tambawala, Director for Products and Marketing, Franklin Temp Templeton, India. We have Ms. Resha Jain, Vice President, Content Marketing for Sugar Cosmetics. Ms. Roshni Das, Regional Marketing Director, Asia Pacific and Japan, Sales and Marketing Group, Intel Technology Private Limited. And also our session chair, moderator, Ms. Anita Kotwani, CEO for Kara India, to join us and uh, take this discussion forward. Thank you so much, Opa. Thank you, panelists, for taking time. Apologies for the slight delay from our side uh, on the panel to start. I will, I'm conscious that a couple of you want to kind of wrap up the session a little earlier, so I'm going to intend trying to cut the session accordingly. Before, we, before I even quickly get into the session, I generally wanted to take a moment to congratulate Roshni Das. She's recently been elevated to the regional marketing head position for APAC in Japan, uh, leading the sales and marketing group at Intel. So Roshni, wishing you the very best in your new role. With Thank that, Thank you. quickly driving into our discussion. If you look at the e-commerce industry, I think what has emerged is that the digital has really become the backbone of this retail sector. Uh, with 6,300 crores spent across the e-commerce platforms, the growth projected in our latest report is about 38%. And this entire terminology of commerce everywhere, which is really making home the new commerce frontier, there are increasing possibilities for shoppable experiences, you know, which help the brands bridge this inspiration to transaction kind of uh, conversation. So let's understand how this evolution is taking place. Roshni, if I could start with you to share your thoughts on this e-commerce evolution. Thank you, Anita, and lovely to be here. Uh, just a quick few uh, numbers to back what you said. Uh, today, you're right, e-commerce has grown 25% uh, from your report, up to 38 billion, and then goes up to about 200 billion uh, by year 2027. And we are gonna see a two and a half, uh, 2.5 X growth. Uh, in a very short time in the next five years. So big um, um, marketing mix area, big fill up for our ecosystem. But from a marketing perspective, I think that there are a couple of things playing out. I, I would break that up into four or five areas. Uh, one is I think just on the back of the pandemic, I think everybody has seen an acceleration and a behavioral change, right? In terms of how we're looking at this platform across. I think trust has increased, access has increased. So I think that the future of e-commerce is also going to grow on the back of that. The second piece that we are seeing, um, Anita, is that we are seeing a huge amount of growth coming from lower towns. Again, I think tier two, tier three uh, cities, four out of five shoppers coming from smaller cities. So again, you know, um, a factor of the trust and the access that has come in. Uh, two, three other quick data points is uh, our, our cohort, which is women and silvers, a more independent ability, you know, to transact. So fantastic to see uh, more women and silvers coming in into this category. And the last couple of things has been social commerce. And I think we'll talk a little more about it as we go along. 40% uh, of our online shoppers at some point have bought from social media channels. And so we're seeing influencers and individual brand advocates and that economy uh, growing pretty significantly. So all in all, uh, a very interactive economy to be part of. And you know, hopefully we learn uh, more through this eminent panel as we go along. Thanks, Roshni. Just love the sheer number crunching that you've quickly thrown back at us from our report as well. Jusa, coming to you, from e-commerce to this entire swing towards conversational commerce, what are your views of this changing evolution? So, you know, I think we're at an inflection point where conversational AI, uh, you know, is concerned. So, I mean, you know, if I look at just the BFSI sector and particularly from an asset management perspective, I think a decade ago, you know, if you actually, if a customer actually managed to transact online, I mean, he'd be very happy saying that, well, I can transact from the comfort of my home. But I think very, very rapidly in the last at least three or four years, we've seen customers, you know, say that, well, Transaction is one thing. Now it's 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 passe, right? I mean, it's it's it's, uh, it's something that is a given. But clearly, because you know, financial services products do tend to be a little complex, they actually now want to start doing conversations while they're transacting. Correct. So they're not saying that. Well, okay, you know what? I will do a conversation 
and maybe then transact. That's one group. But we see a lot of people actually one doing wanting to do conversations while just they're going through this journey. The other very important change that we're seeing, at least uh, from a from a product perspective and from a from an online commerce perspective, is that people now want to transact in a language in which they actually talk. Right, so it's no longer about to say that. Well, like an I, how would probably have an IVR at one point in time to say that? Okay, fine. If you didn't go through these these paths, you possibly can't complete, you know, your conversation or get your information. I think customers no longer, you know, have that kind of patience. They actually want to talk to you uh, uh, and transact with you just in the way that probably do a very very normal conversation, you know, either on WhatsApp or you know on a on a phone. So for them, uh, you know, to say that, hey, this is a bar. And therefore, you know, give it some leeway and, and be a little bit more forgiving. I think I think those days will get uh, you know get over very very quickly. Thanks, Jazeer. Resha, coming to you next. You know, from a business that's really been focusing on the direct to consumer part, how have you seen this evolution taking shape from your end? I think Anita, gone are the days when conversational commerce was. A, like you know good to have I think it's very hygiene now uh, we are all living in the swiggy age of things you know where if your order is delayed you want to know immediately you know where is it and what's happening with it I think we've seen a similar thing with e-com you know uh, whether and I'm not even talking about right now at sugar right from mid days of 2015 like you know we definitely had like a whole team because when people shop and especially with sugar like when they shop for things like makeup they want to know will this suit me is this vegan you know you could give out information but people still seek solace in knowing it for themselves you know and that sort of uh, confidence is inspired by conversational commerce i think uh, having said that i completely echo what jazair said i think a lot of gap will be filled in how this conversational commerce is scaled you know because chatbots need to not sound like they have mugged up four lines and they will go exactly in that format, you know. So I think there will be a lot of automation there. So I, this is good to <laughs> sorry. This is good to stay. Thanks so much, Risha. Bharat, do you see a different nuance to this evolution? Are you seeing it slightly differently from the other panelists? Yeah, thanks, Anita. Lovely to be here. Uh, great to hear Jazair and uh, you know Roshni and uh, Risha's thoughts. Uh, a lot to echo from there and a lot to learn, you know, in terms of what they've said. Uh, there are a couple of points which I have, you know, uh, which I've experienced as a, you know, digital professional over a couple of years. Uh, one is definitely the topmost is that there has been a, a you know, huge change businesses have experienced in the past two years, then the past decade. I think a lot has changed. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, e-commerce and digital transformation for all the businesses is in the center of it. So a, a lot has changed in terms of uh, the way consumer is actually using the internet. Also, I feel there are two bigger impacts actually I would think have happened. One was the geo services launched uh, a few years back, which gave uh, you know affordable data to a larger consumer base where a larger Bharat, which came to online. And now the pandemic effect, which has enhanced further accelerated the e-commerce uh, growth. So, uh, and between this e-commerce journey and growth, I think the newer formats like, you know, social commerce, video commerce, live commerce is definitely a part of it. And I, I feel, uh, you know, as, as just sheerly speaking numbers, it's a $350 billion uh, opportunity over end of 2030. So I think it's a huge uh, place to be. And uh, conversational commerce, of course, uh, being a part of, uh, you know, the family of apps, which we have, where we deliver the larger Bharat and, uh, you know, uh, the audiences, which are indicted. I think we are uh, well positioned to you know, kind of move ahead in this space. Thanks, Bharat, for that perspective. Just coming back to, say, to you, if you looked at this progress that you actually have done, you know, the shift from e-commerce, moving to mobile, then social commerce, which brands like Misho, et cetera, coming up, video commerce today coming in, which, you know, YouTube wanting to experiment with trying to do live TV selling kind of stuff happening, and now conversational commerce. From a BFSI sector, there's a huge implication of this. What have you changed in your marketing efforts to, you know, get through this larger spectrum? Ah, okay. So it's a challenging question. You know, you must understand. You we're a well, we're a regulated industry, right? And and fairly strictly regulated. Uh, you know, when it comes to particularly when it comes to asset management. But I think we also realize today very consciously that you can't you can't be throwing the offer document and 
at one end and the disclaimer at the end to say that, well, that's my job done because consumers are, 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 are going to be unforgiving about that. So I think we've also kind of, you know, tried to build and balance to make sure that we really start understanding the consumer's language. So for example, if somebody said, uh, you know, imagine somebody sent me a WhatsApp message to my official Franklin Temple rising. Hey, 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 what's happening? Now I can't possibly go and say that, well, you know, I'm sorry, sir. I don't know what, what you're trying to tell me because I'm very used to saying, uh, listening to Franklin India, Blue Chip Fund or so on and so forth, right? So I, I've, we've, we've tried, uh, you know, uh, and successfully though, to a certain extent to actually start building those conversations in a tonality of voice which is acceptable to people right today lots of conversations actually happen in english I, I don't think that any of us are doing conversations in only pure english but if you've not trained your tools enough to recognize that how are you going to really service the customer right so i think that's that that's the perhaps the 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 transformation that you know at least bfsi companies are now going through uh, rapidly, uh, difficult change because again, as I said, you know, you've got to be cognizant of regulation. But I think the important bit is to start really talking in the tonality of voice that the consumer wants to be spoken to, and it's about you know you've got to show a little bit of brand EQ from from brands from the brand side uh, if you want to really build that connect. Yeah. Reshma, coming to you, you've supercharged you know your efforts in this direction to really capitalize on this trend. Your your brand really makes it very very easy for you to kind of transcend across. Your views on this? Well, I think for like I said, you know, for our brands, all the brands in the VFPL umbrella, conversational commerce as far as we're going, and we have we do all of the things that you mentioned. You know, we are trying to do social commerce, we have right commerce on our side. E-commerce is obviously our bread and butter. Like you know, we're a D2C brand, um, and uh, I think conversational commerce is also something that has always patently gone on. You know, while we look at it is that everything feeds into it each other it's like you know wherever your consumers are i think again like you know uh, the need to serve customers in their own language like you said is really important we do try and do that like especially when it is real people giving help but i think a lot can be done in terms of uh, technology and ai you know uh, coming in from that end but with d2c the way we look at it we want to ease the customer's journey wherever we can so we do as much handholding and as much like you know we we have systems built in with FAQs with understanding. We have a lot of content going around it, you know, uh, and with especially um, any kind of end you know uh, end stage journey on buying decisions. We really try and make sure that we understand exactly where those problems come from. Because in India, problems with our consumers are very unique. You know, They really want to understand if a product works for their skin tone. How do they identify their skin tone? A lot of the education is required. So for us, this actually becomes a very, very good tool, conversational commerce, where we can actually be there with them and you know, educate them as well and hold their hand through the journey of embracing makeup and choices and skin care. But do you see relevance of this platform? And I'm saying primarily there's a lot of time that's really getting spent, right? Do you think there is an avenue to grow your base of, uh, you know, Daily Hunt and Josh consumers by using this larger play? Sure, absolutely. Relevance, uh, absolutely. From a marketing standpoint, uh, for sure. And even from a product standpoint. See, we, uh, you know, are, as I say, you know, the family of apps which we have, which is Josh and Daily Hunt. Uh, largely act as a catalyst uh, to the larger advertising partnerships where we provide users, you know, in a way where they can engage with them and sell their products and services. Uh, speaking about that, also looking at the way, you know, as we mentioned about the evolution of commerce and the larger Bharat coming online. Uh, and, you know, as, uh, you know, Risha also mentioned that, you know, and uh, Juzer also mentioned about talking to them in their own language. So we've been trying to do that in our own way. Uh, and, you know, trying to reach the customers and the, you know, users and gaining those users on our platform. So I think uh, from that perspective, uh, we, we are, you know, kind of uh, thinking in the right direction. And I think Josh, which is just one year old, uh, kind of delivers the new short format uh, creator uh, ecosystem as well for the live and social and conversational commerce. Thanks, Bharat. Roj, for Intel, it's very different, right? You have a B2B and a B2C marketing kind of, uh, you know, uh, business model. And, you know, when you look at this areas in terms of commerce and the way it's kind of evolved, how have you explored this changing landscape? 
no, the, the, the more I was listening to the panel, I was thinking that eventually we will get to, you know, experiential commerce, right? Like conversation as part of the experience. So it'll become experiential commerce and E will get translated into that. And I also feel on the other spectrum, especially, you know, as I listen to Josair, uh, intelligent commerce will become very important, right? So a huge amount of that norming and forming will happen. I'll give you some examples. For instance, last year, when we launched our third generation Xeon platform for our, our business audiences, um, we, we used extended reality platforms, which means that we took the principles of filmmaking into launches and events, right? The reason why I'm bringing this example is over time, a lot of commerce will become experiential like this. For instance, our Intel Evo uh, platform uh, uh, PCs uh, have AR, VR, you know, in the way you can look at, uh, it, it, you can bring your PC home through technology of AR, VR. And we saw that with many companies do, doing that, right? Uh, cars came into your living rooms because there was no other way to experience the touch and feel of the aspect during the pandemic. And more and more experiential commerce will help you convert faster. I think we've seen that on the back of, uh, you know, a product like B2B as well as uh, our Intel Evo lineup of PCs. And I think on the intelligent commerce piece, I've been a big advocate of MarTech, right? We've got to get more intelligent in the way, you know, when our consumers are landing on our platforms, what, what do we know? How are we understanding their needs and, you know, how are we serving them better? So the more e-commerce evolves, the more patterns we will be able to evolve and therefore the more intelligent we will be in serving our ads and serving our communication. So I think companies need to also invest um, in making their commerce and their experience, whether it's direct to consumer or working with our e-com partners to make the commerce more intelligent for the consumer. And we invest in a lot of MarTech tools um, very, very uh, hugely. We've got a digital hub in Singapore, you know, that not only looks at trends like this, but also sensitizes. So like I said, yeah, a huge amount of the spectrum ready to be uh, explored. I love the two pointers that you built up, Ro Rosh, which is around experiential commerce and intelligence commerce. So at one level, we're really talking about is, you know, this conversational e-commerce going to really replace you know, the commerce per se. And then we also have a whole host of brands, like I said, who are coming in in the video commerce space. There's a lot in the mobile commerce space. There's going to be a lot more traction over here. What is your take, uh, Resha, if I can come to you? Who do you think is going to win this game? Is it going to be like uh, a place where everybody has going to have something there for them? Uh, what's your punt? I think every time, everywhere, everybody has something going for them if they want to get it. Who's going to win it? Whoever wins with speed of execution. I think uh, it's going to be very important that strategy and execution come out right. And uh, like Roshni was saying, you know, the experience of it actually becomes something that eases the consumer's uh, journey. Like, you know, just really, really helps them take any decision smarter, faster, easier you know and all we need to do is find the right tools of scale because we are all talking to consumers just being able to do it at scale and with the kind of uh, in the kind of language and in the kind of tone that they understand and that they want to hear it in you know while keeping it engaging and, ent and entertaining and informative i think it, it is such a difficult question and either to answer who's going to win it I'm going to say we are going to win it. I mean, as long as we can all run faster, we will win. Bharat, coming to you, coexistence of all those plan, all of those commerce platforms, or you see a front runner there? Yeah, I like the way Reisha put it. So uh, <laughs> just uh, picking from there, uh, I think uh, there's a lot of martech and conversational commerce and even AI, conversational AI, and a lot of uh, new tools and the way uh, marketing is being done. Uh, I believe that uh, definitely, you know, there's a lot more uh, good marketing messages which can be done to exponential marketing. But uh, I, I feel that, you know, it will coexist because I feel the next wave of the users which are coming on the internet again are, uh, you know, the e-commerce needs to be, you know, still be, you know, uh, a wagon, you know, has to have a, a fling of vernacular. And, you know, they need to have the, you know, right uh, tools and enabling the vernacular users to have the right communication platforms and all of that. So I think it's still going to take a journey. And during that evolution, of course, both will exist. And I, I feel that it will complement. So for the new users which are coming, I think the you know uh, e-commerce at the base level will complement. And conversational commerce will be for more exponential, more evolved user as we go forward. So that's it. 
Thanks, Bharat. Roshni, we've seen on our spend report that the, you know, the social and video platforms seem to be front runners in terms of spends. And with then getting the dimension of social commerce and video commerce, what's your take on this, this perspective? I think that you're right. Um, I mean, some number that I think been provided was about 650 million users of short format video. So a uh, huge a uh, huge upsurge there, but I think the big part of the spend is always to go where you know the consumer is as part of their daily lives, right? As Bharat was saying, every consumer probably has six to seven touch points in a day. So I don't think you can cater to only one platform uh, given the amount of distraction there is. Um, very recently I read a book by Seth Gordon and he said like the internet um, is the largest it feels like the largest platform, but actually it's the smallest because of the billion conversations that are happening at any point in time. And sometimes you're not invited in those conversations, right? But the fact is that social and video will just go on the fact back of the fact that people are more comfortable using technology in their homes. You've seen that, you know, direct to consumer brands, influencer brands, um, short format content in terms of languages is, will also be a propeller. I think those are good uh, good trends. Some of the experiences we've also had uh, that I wanted to share was, I think co-creation is a big uh, uh, step forward as well, right? For instance, when we do our, our gaming uh, segment work, we worked say with Valorant, which is a very well-known gaming title. We drive a, a marathon on gaming, streaming through all our influencers, but then we connect it to an e-commerce platform. So the buyer's journey is, is very seamless. And at the same time, you know, you're able to bring what the consumer needs in terms of the experience of the content, gaming title, the richness of, you know, our gaming PCs are being showcased as well as taking them straight to e-com. That's one of the ways that we're gonna look at social and video. The other pieces globally, I think we've got about 120 influencers. Uh, that is an area where we're definitely very willing to uh, co-create with our individual brand influencers, uh, other brand influencers that are experts, hobbyists, creators. I think that whole area uh, is going to explode. And we work very closely with you know, uh, many gaming uh, streamers that we nurture in-house, as well as work with publications or you know, uh, creators on their own. Uh, to talk about, you know, how they use technology as an extension of their lives. So yes, getting the right mix of being on the platform, but creating content that is meaningful to the consumer um, would be the way to go. So Juzer, in, in, in terms of this perspective, what, what, what is your take? Where do you see it coming? Who do you think is going to kind of come forward uh, as a front runner? So I think... Uh... Uh, I, I, I think I'd like to go with what Bharat mentioned, right? It's, it's essentially about, you know, uh, both of these traditional e-commerce, conversational commerce, uh, you know, surviving together rather than saying that it's going to be just one versus the other. Because I think the fact is that, you know, if you've seen even traditionally, I mean, today, if somebody asks you that, well, uh, you know, would you think that the radio would survive? The fact is that the radio has survived, but it's evolved, right? So now we, people have moved to digital radio. So I'm saying that I think, yes, conversational commerce uh, will perhaps take the lead, but I don't think traditional e-commerce will be far behind. I also want to place a point that sometimes, you know, I think all of us, once we get into a newer idea and a newer path, we sometimes tend to over-engineer and, and that's when the customer really feels that, hey, you know what, have you really listened to me? I mean, it's a great idea that you've got conversational commerce going, but you know what, I'm very happy doing simple stuff because it works for me. And so, so, so saying that, well, it's one versus the other, I, I don't think it's going to be uh, that. It's going to be both will coexist. And I think who will win, in my view, frankly, the customer will decide that, really. I don't think that, uh, you know, I, I, I like to sit on that judgment for sure. Oh, very, very well said, uh, you know, Chazar. I, I think so too. If you keep the customer at the center of your thinking and surround him with what you think is his desire, his need, I think you've got that uh, absolutely right. Which brings me really to the, you know, the next question for us, which is really around this role of content and what do we see? How important is that in this e-commerce world? Uh, we do feel that there is going to be some shift in the marketing dollars and the way we spend it. Is mass advertising going to be much more focused because we're talking personalization, we're talking personalization at scale. Somewhere the delta needs to shift in terms of tilt of where the marketing spend is going to you know, kind of come in. 
And with inbound and outbound marketing, one really about, around push and pull strategies. Uh, Bharat, I'll come to you now. Where do you think uh, is going to be this, uh, this, this balance that you need to bring? How are you going to work that out for your businesses? So uh, I, I, I feel that lately, out of my experience dealing with advertising partners and you know looking at my product as well, I think there is a huge shift of uh, the consumer in trusting the creator community, the influencers, uh, the you know the conversational commerce or the you know video creators who kind of have a, you know understanding of a particular product or probably they you know kind of share an idea or share the description or product video about a particular uh, you know uh, product. Now, uh, keeping that in mind, uh, this is more pull. So it's more about consumer. It's more about content creation. But to add to that, push marketing will also exist. So it's not versus pull versus push. I think both have to coexist again because push marketing has its own uh, requirement. You know, when there is a sale happening, when there is a you know big billion day, they need to communicate. But on top of that, I think definitely the uh, you know content marketing will come. The more pull marketing will come. And also, I see that you know consumers today. Uh, can create because uh, in the center is the creator uh, creating content which is engaging for a brand uh, which is authentic so a consumer trusts that today and which which kind of will lead to a you know kind of a more cohesive uh, approach for marketing uh, as we go forward so you know that that those are things and again i feel that consumer marketing considering uh, you know content marketing today i think there is a huge uh, you know kind of uh, uh, growth expected i think uh, compounded annual growth of around 25% by 2025 which is 2200 crores purely from a uh, you know influencer marketing from a report which i came across so i think these are the numbers which show you know in a way how it's going to grow so these are the things and again just speaking just last one line about josh like, you know, we are giving, as we are growing our platform, we are giving and creating an environment where we can offer uh, this right uh, triggers, the right environment, the right content creators, which can translate this message further to, you know, kind of support the uh, bull marketing. Yeah. Roshni, with, with, with this, you know, the investment on content and content initiatives, and we've had the pleasure of working with, uh, with you jointly on a few of such initiatives, where do you see the larger content marketing play out for Intel going forward? I think the, the big part of content marketing and the marketer's challenge and both opportunity is agility, right? You have to keep experimenting, trying different short-term messages and see what resonates and then, you know, build testing and, uh, you know, build enough reach on the messages that resonate. So I think given the fact that you have so many different cohorts, our content journey has to be about trying different messaging for different um, consumers which have different beliefs. So I think that is a big focus for marketers going forward. But we've worked with you very closely on trying new, uh, you know, uh, ways to go to market and, you know, media vehicles. Um, I think that regional influences for us um, is an area we're going to focus on. I already called out co-creation, but, you know, if the future of the growth is tier two, tier three markets, how can we, you know, coexist with and work closely with our regional influencers? And we've done a lot of that with Techwani, Techwiser, et cetera. I think a lot of tier two, tier three micro platforms, micro social platforms have also grown. Like Intel's work very closely with say Array, which converses to the consumer in the way that they are used to for that platform, right? Even if it's simple things like doodles, you know, uh, the brand needs to speak the language of the people on that platform. I think we've done um, some portions on, on that. A lot of our focus is on reviewers. So, but the reviewers also have to make it simple, the how-tos, right? Like Resha talked about uh, cosmetics and you need somebody to demystify technology. So we focus a lot on making it accessible with uh, you know, our reviewers going through either listicles or just you know video content that they would create. So that's really the play of digital, but the important piece is always, you know, where is that consumer journey landing? You can create all the content, but where is it going to land, right? Are, are we going to house it on your own website? Are you going to put it on e-commerce? Are you going to put it on their own social handle? So making sure that the consumer journey works seamlessly is also a very important part of, you know, getting the right content uh, mix in place. And I think reach mediums will continue, uh, you know, though this is about conversational com uh, com uh, commerce, I think just sometimes getting the message out often with the distraction levels is also going to play a very big uh, role in reaching our consumers. So uh, these are some of the things that I thought were important. Yeah, Rosh, you, you, you talked about thing, you know, content is king. I think the next line, which usually comes up, distribution is then queen. 
because you really want to obviously create all that content, but how are you going to land up ensuring that the consumers actually see that content? Coming to you, Jose, for a BFSI category, you know, the kind of content, whether it is infographics, uh, you know, the blogs from experts, the articles that you really need, your, your category is very different from a content creation point of view. So do you have like, you know, financial experts sitting in at your yeah. end to kind of build that larger piece, a bit around that place? Sure. So, uh, so Anita, I'm going to drop after this question because I have another call which I'm hosting, so I need to be there, but I'm going to answer this one for you. So, you know, we are very clear that one, uh, consumers don't have the time now to read, you know, long pages of content. So we're actually engaging with a lot of, you know, partners who are experts at writing short format content and uh, you know making it as crisp as possible. So I'm going to name a brand. I mean, we work. We're trying to work very closely with Terribly Tiny Tales because you know they've kind of mastered the art of uh, you know uh, saying things in, in less and less words. Uh, but again, I think we've been working with external content creators for a very very long time because the fact is that we know lots of times that we may have an internal view on a sector so i may have a view on technology but do i have a specific view on metaverse i don't right because i we may not have the internal expertise for that and today consumers want to listen to all aspects of uh, 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 of, of, of sectors and of industry, right? So today, I mean, uh, space travel is, is going to become hopefully very, very big. Uh, do we see, do we have a view on, you know, general mobility? Of course we do. But do we have a view on specifics? No, we don't. And therefore we do try, do we do uh, partner with external content creators? But, you know, with that, uh, Anita, I'm going to drop, I think, great panel, lovely interacting. I'm going to take up a recording of this just to see the balance portion of this because it's Thank really you so much, is there a conversation. But uh, great to connect with all of you guys. And I'm hoping to kind of keep connected uh, with you in the future. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Thank you. Uh, Rosh, I'm going to come back to you because I know that you also need to drop off in the next five minutes or so. So I'm just going to quickly come to you on the challenges that you think you face, uh, you know, uh, where you see yourself today and going forward in your journey with Intel, where do you think, uh, you know, it's going to uh, be is content going to be the, the challenging point? Is it going to be the different, uh, you know, uh, moving from commerce to conversational at a larger level? Is there the interplay between gaming, commerce, all getting crystallized into one thing? There is a lot happening. So how do you kind of keep up with this piece and saying, I've got these things right. I still need to work on, you know, a couple of these things. What are those couple of challenges that you still face? I think I, I would... Uh kind of look at some common themes across, you know, uh, one is the, the, the mediums that you use, whether they're, they're influencers or whether you're displaying on e-commerce or the engagement tactics that you would use, which is like you talked about conversational converse, uh, commerce. But I think the bigger focus was just getting, for me, the complexities of setting up so many new channels and then nurturing them. And then, you know, knowing when uh, maybe our consumer has moved on to a new channel. So I think that is what we're dealing with today with the influx of, you know, OTT, with social, with video, with creators, you know, and, and then as and more, as uh, Bharat said, as more and more creators come in, they're brands in themselves and they're platforms in themselves, right? So how do you, that's my second piece, how do you get the interplay of platform, brand, and content creators, you know, um, to go along with us, you know, and tell a story uh, to our end users and, you know, be in service of them would be the second piece that I would focus on. And then, Really, the measurement to conversion, I think we're out there across multiple channels. How, like I would come back to intelligent commerce, how can we measure what we market? You know, what is the best way to look at ROI across the funnel? Is it resonating? Is the consumer really engaging with us or are we just broadcasting? So intelligent MarTech, getting our measurement and conversion right um, would be a big piece. And then I also, you know, I touched upon it on the second piece of brand platform, and influencers, I think just cross-pollination across these various areas of touch points would be an area uh, to look at. So yeah, these are the three, four challenges. Uh, never a dull day in a marketer's life. So looking forward to it. Thanks, Raj. Shresha, coming to you, I'll take back the question on the content piece as well, where you feel what is sugar done in terms of the content marketing and from an advertising and marketing dollar spent do you see that shift happening? And what are the couple of challenges that are left on the table for you to address? 
Well, Anita, honestly, I'm a content marketer. You know, it's been like my, not only my bread, but bread and butter, it's been my passion. I personally feel that content is having a feel day to day. Uh, from the time that we started out doing it, finally, everybody's woken up to influencers, to content, to the idea of having conversations, even while you're talking to the customer and showing them how to apply something, you know, or how to get something. And I, I think content is serious speaking right now and it's having a field day. But like, I need, but like Roshni said, you know, having a field day also means that a thousand opportunities open up, you know, suddenly there is NFTs, there's Metaverse, there is, there are 20 platforms last year, it was the first time that I worked with Josh, with MX Sakatak, with Moj, with uh, Trell, I mean, communities are growing and so are platforms and I think you want to be available everywhere, you want to see where you are, brand collaborations, partnerships from in-film placements to shows, creating shows together to OTT, like, you know, to IP creation. We have done it all. We have been the fastest growing social media platforms across all social media channels for the past two and a half years. It has taken a lot of work. The, you know, and I personally think the way you divide spends is very simple. Initially, you do experiment a lot as a content marketer because all of these avenues, they're, what do you want at the end of the day? You want conversions, but you also want amplification. You want reach. Numbers in terms of reach, we just had a 1.3 billion impression campaign go on on a particular platform and it, it's crazy just how far you can go in talking to a customer at least showing them that you exist you know so i think digital we will want to spend everywhere and actually see what works for us you know and what works for us in two ways a we want people to know who we are that will be a very big win if you know one day people know us just as much as they know like me because 45 years of business you know that that's exactly what we want and the other thing is of course that we are able to speak or tell a story or our story in such a way that they choose us over others you know hopefully because our product is great and our so is our messaging so these are the two important things in terms of challenges honestly just the sheer volume of work and the sheer volume of learning again every year with new things. It is very taxing one after the other, but it is also very enjoyable because of the same reason. <laughs> never a dull day, like Roshni said, I agree. Like never a dull day. And I'm just waiting and going to tackle everything. I think it's going to be a good run. Bharat, comments from you on your challenges? Yeah, so it's really great to hear uh, Roshni and, uh, you know, Risha talk about the kind of challenges they are going. Uh, I would frankly say these are opportunities. So I, I, we don't look at it as challenges. We see all the opportunities. We want to solve all of them, you know, to, for our, uh, you know, brand partners and advertising partners. Case in point being, you know, one of the, you know, examples I would like to say, you know, mention is that Roshni mentioned also. So one of the fashion, you know, uh, brands, uh, you know, we work with very closely and we haven't opened uh, Josh uh, full stack, uh, you know, ad products yet. You're still working it's a year old and we tried something with the regional uh, influencers and the campaign has come out really well and it was much satisfactory it was a learning for us also so we are growing from them up there and uh, other than that uh, you know as i said challenges uh, you know you said challenges i say opportunities is basically look at the uh, user growth what it's going to be right i mean five years down the line we'll be looking at one billion users on the internet uh, looking at e-commerce growth which is around 350 around 2030 uh, 350 billion dollars by 2030 then you look at the advertising revenue growth. So I think for us, it's all, uh, you know, trying to work and see that how we can maximize and win the mind share, uh, the time share and the revenue share. So that's that's what I would like to, you know, kind of put it. Thank you, Bharat. And given I know paucity of time and Rosh also needing to go into another call as well, I'm just going to quickly wrap up for us. So I generally think that this e-commerce to conversational commerce spectrum that we've really been discussing over the last 30 minutes Obviously, we all are aligned that each one has a role to play, whether it is m-commerce, video commerce, you know, and the larger conversational commerce. I think an important critical component that we really talked about was the context and content and context that we need to have, you know, keeping consumers engaged in this full funnel marketing. Couple of pointers which Roshni called out. I love the word intelligent commerce experiential commerce, which came out as stronger points, this entire piece of trust and access with, you know, your customer, how are you going to be able to do that? And the larger conversation is today, you know, I think what Giselle mentioned, 
people what are doing conversations while they are transacting another important part for us to understand where is this journey going to go i'm going to end it with some small nuggets on each of you that i have kind of picked up rosh uh, one of your you know posts on linkedin really talked about if knowledge is power sharing it really multiplies it multifold so thank you today for sharing you know such wonderful views on this entire panel for us with so much of generosity awesome. and uh, while jazair is not here uh, i think uh, one of the pieces that i read about him was this collection of articles that he puts together every weekend for him to kind of read up on how the industry is changing so i'm hoping some of that he would have read up for preparation of this panel as well and for reisha i think she and i have one thing in common both of us have come from a completely different industry we've done law and she has become a content marketer i am leading a media you know vertical so completely new industry but reisha the passion with which you have kind of shared your expertise really just shows that all you need is you know a passion for the work that you love doing and then it doesn't matter which industry you know you can kind of really grow bharat a bit about you as well i think i love the thought about saying you know you need to be a forward thinker you need to think 3 to 5 years down the line where this industry is going to move it's a great quality inherent and inherently important quality i think for all of us as professionals so thank you so much today to thank all you. the panelists for having such a wonderful session extremely delighted to have hosted all of you pleasure was mine thank you so thank much thank you so much anita you moderated it so well and thank you for that end bit i didn't i mean i'm glad that we have something in common i could like and law both of us that was interesting thank, thank you, you so thank you thank you so much everyone